Hello, welcome everybody, Mr. Navarrete, and today I'll be going over the Charles Law homework. So, let's get started. For our first question, it has, Fred and his friend Klaus have 36 liters of helium trapped in a steel cylinder by a piston at a temperature of 200 degrees Kelvin. What will the volume of the gas become if the temperature is lowered to 100 Kelvin? In order to see what's happening, let me add some particles to my little piston here. I'll just add one for now. For our one particle, if we're at 200 degrees Kelvin, it'll bounce around the walls of our piston, you know, in a similar fashion, it'll stay at the same speed, nothing will change. However, what happens when we bring down the temperature? Our particle is still gonna bounce around, but it's not gonna bounce around as fast anymore. If we added more particles to this, there'd be less collisions between each of the particles. Because there are less collisions, that means the volume that we're gonna be in is not gonna have to be as big as the one that we are originally in. So we can say that if we lower our temperature by half, we can decrease the volume needed by half. So it would only take 18 liters. Let's keep these ideas for the next couple of problems. Next one, we still have 36 liters of helium trapped, same original temperature of 200 degrees Kelvin. However, now what we're doing is raising our temperature to 400 degrees Kelvin. So if I add my particle, and if this is its speed at 200 degrees Kelvin, then at 400, it's gonna go faster. Again, if I add more particles, the faster it goes, the more collisions that there are gonna be, and more collisions, I'm gonna need a bigger volume to hold all of them. So, if I double my temperature, that means I'm gonna to have to double my original volume. So now instead of 36, I'm gonna have a final volume of 72 liters. All right, so now same piston, 36 liters at the same original temperature, but now we're gonna increase from 200 Kelvin to 300 Kelvin. So I'm gonna add my particle. And again, that would be at speed at 200 degrees Kelvin, but at 300, it wouldn't be as fast as 400, but it'd still be faster than 300. So we're not gonna need as big as a volume as if we were to double our temperature. However, it'd still be bigger than the original 36 liters. In this case, it's gonna be between 36 and 72, right in the middle. So it'll just be 54 liters. For our next one, it asks, well, what happens if I decrease my volume from 36 liters to nine liters? So let me draw my particle. And if I draw its motion, this is how it would look like originally something similar to this. But now what happens when I decrease my volume, in this case by a factor of four? Well, it's still gonna move around. However, because the volume is smaller, there has to be less collisions. by decreasing the number of collisions, then my temperature is gonna drop. In this case, since I decreased my volume by a factor of four, my temperature is gonna decrease by a factor of four. So my new temperature is gonna be 50 Kelvin. Now it asks, what's gonna happen to my temperature if I increase my volume from 36 liters to 81? So now, if I add my particle, these are the collisions that it's, that it's gonna have. By increasing my volume, I'm allowing for more collisions to happen. By having these more, 
by increasing the number of collisions, that's going to increase my temperature, in this case by a factor of 2.25. So my new temperature would be 450 Kelvin. For number two, it says Roger and Virginia took 400 milliliters of helium gas and performed an experiment in which they heated and cooled it and measured the resulting volumes. You're given a set of data and you're asked to plot it. I have already plotted it for us, so let's answer a couple of questions about it. For part A, it says predict the volume for a temperature of 300 degrees Kelvin. So let me look where 300 degrees Kelvin is. It's right there. Let's see what volume that corresponds to. It's about 600 milliliters, so my new volume is going to be 600 milliliters. For next one, it says predict the volume for a temperature of 530 degrees Kelvin. So let's see where 530 is. It's right about there. And let's see what volume it gives us. It's about 1,050, so I'm going to say 1,050 milliliters. For our next one, it says predict the volume for a temperature of 800 degrees Kelvin. And on my graph, well, that's really far off from my graph. That doesn't mean I can't use my graph to help me see where it would land. See, we form a straight line, so it's a linear relationship between temperature and volume. So I know that as my temperature increases, I'm going to have to have a higher volume. In this case, over 800 degrees Kelvin, I'm going to get a volume of about 1600 milliliters. It says predict the temperature needed for a volume of 1000 milliliters. So let's see where 1000 milliliters is. It's about there. So let's see where that corresponds to my temperature. It's about 500. So I'm going to see the temperature needed is about 500 degrees Kelvin. Next it asks, well, predict the temperature needed for a volume of 700. So let's see where 700 is. It's about there. Let's see what it corresponds to on my temperature. It's about 350, so I'm going to say the temperature is going to be 350 degrees Kelvin. And again, here it says predict the temperature needed for a volume of 320 milliliters. On my graph, anything below 400, I can't see. But again, because of this linear relationship, I can continue extrapolating data from it and see where I would land at 320 milliliters. Doing that and expanding my line, I would get a temperature of about 160 degrees Kelvin. You can double check with your table and your graph and see if you got the same thing. For number three, it says, well, what will be the final volume of a gas if its original volume was 400 milliliters and the temperature of 300 degrees Kelvin if its original temperature rose to 540 degrees Kelvin? So I'm just going to write down Charles' law. V1 over T1 is equal to V2 divided by T2. And I'm just going to plug in to see what I need to solve for. Once I have all my values in, I see, hey, I need to solve for V2. So I'm going to isolate for V2. And I get V2 is going to equal to 400 milliliters times 540 degrees Kelvin divided by 300 degrees Kelvin. And that gives me a final volume of 720 milliliters. Next, it asks, find the final temperature of a gas whose volume changed from 250 milliliters to 50 milliliters. The original temperature of the gas was 720 degrees Kelvin. So again, I'm going to write down my equation. V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. And then I'm just going to plug in to see what I need to solve for. And once I have all of that, I see that I need to solve for T2. And isolating for T2, I get T2 is equal to 50.0 milliliters times 720 degrees Kelvin over 250 milliliters. Plugging all that into my calculator, I get a final temperature of 140 degrees Kelvin. For number five, it has find the original volume of a gas whose temperature changed from 27 degrees Celsius to 177 degrees Celsius. The final volume of the gas was 420 centimeters cubed. So again, I'm just going to write down my equation. V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. Now, before I plug in all of my values, my temperatures are given in degrees Celsius. I'm going to change them into Kelvin because Kelvin is our standard temperature. And in order for all my calculations to make sense, they need to be in Kelvin. So after doing that and plugging everything in, I see that I need to solve for V1. 
Only things that have changed so far is 27 degrees Celsius became 300 degrees Kelvin, and 177 degrees Celsius became 450 degrees Kelvin. Solving for V1, I get V1 is equal to 420 centimeters cubed over 450 Kelvin times 300 Kelvin. That gives me a new volume of 280 centimeters cubed. Next up it asks, what was the original temperature of a gas now at 17 degrees Celsius if its volume changed from 657 centimeters cubed to 45.8 centimeters cubed? So I'm just going to write down my equation. V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. And I see 17 degrees Celsius. I need to change that to Kelvin. So doing that and plugging in, I see the need to solve for T1. 17 degrees Celsius becomes 290 degrees Kelvin. Solving for T1, I get 290 Kelvin over 45.8 centimeters cubed times 657 centimeters cubed. Plugging all of that into my calculator, I get a final temperature, well, an initial temperature of 4,160 degrees Kelvin. For number seven, it asks, what will the volume of 254 centimeters cubed of gas be at standard temperature and pressure if its original temperature is 72.6 degrees Celsius. So, first thing, I'm going to write down my equation. V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. And, again, I see 72 degrees Celsius. I'm going to change that to Kelvin, only because it's telling us standard temperature and pressure. And that is in degrees Kelvin. So, my original volume is 254 centimeters cubed at standard temperature and pressure, so 273 degrees Kelvin. V2 is what I'm trying to solve, and 72.6 degrees Celsius becomes 346 degrees Kelvin. Solving for V2, I get 254 centimeters cubed times 346 Kelvin divided by 273 Kelvin. All of that into my calculator gives me a new volume of 322 centimeters cubed. For eight, it asks, what temperature would be needed to change the volume of 275 milliliters of gas at 22 degrees Celsius to 500 milliliters? So, I'm going to write down my equation. V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. And plug in everything that I know. Only change that I've made so far is 22 degrees Celsius to 295 degrees Kelvin. Solving for T2. And plugging all of that into my calculator, I get a new temperature of 536 degrees Kelvin. So for number nine, it says if you double the temperature of 25 milliliters of gas from 25 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius, does the volume double? So let's check. Only thing when it change is 25 degrees and 50 degrees, both from Celsius to Kelvin. So using the same equation, V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2, and plugging my values in, I know that I need to solve for V2. Solving for V2 and plugging all of that into my calculator, I get a volume of 27 milliliters. That's strange. I doubled my temperature, but why didn't my volume double? Hmm. Let's look at number 10. For number 10, it has the same setup. Instead of doubling our temperature from Celsius, instead of doubling our temperature in Celsius, now we're doubling our temperature from in Kelvin, 100 degrees Kelvin to 200. So same equation. V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. So when I plug in, I know that I have to solve for V2. Solving for V2, I get 25 milliliters over 100 degrees Kelvin times 200 Kelvin gives me a new volume of 50 milliliters. What was the difference? Well, before we were doubling our temperature originally in degrees Celsius, but now we doubled our temperature in Kelvin. And that's why we have a standard temperature and pressure. So that way all of our calculations make sense. If we're doubling in Celsius, it's not the same as doubling in Kelvin. And that's going to be it. Again, if you guys have any questions, don't forget to message me or Mr. Morgan on Schoology. 
But other than that, stay safe, and I'll see y'all next time.